24 hours with the Huawei P10. What do I think? That's what this video is all about. For anyone who tried to watch this video live, because we did try and record it live, sorry about that. The fire alarm went off in the hotel we're at and that was beyond our control. Hopefully this will answer all of your questions and if there are any left unanswered, file them in the comments section below. Right, the Huawei P10, it's not a cheap phone, 649 euros. The P10 Plus will be 699, so not that much more money, but you do get a lot more phone with the P10 Plus. So I'll talk about that in a little bit. This this video is all about the P10 and exactly what I think. So 5.1 inches full HD IPS screen, 8 megapixel front camera, fingerprint scanner below the phone as uh, below the screen as opposed to on the back of the screen. You've got dual cameras around the back, high resolution with optical image stabilization than its predecessor. So that's a 12 megapixel and a 20 megapixel camera, f2.2. Now the texturing on the back is interesting, only available with select few colors, not available in the black or the white version. This is a diamond crafted finish, which is really neat. It doesn't attract fingerprints and it repels light, i.e. it reflects light. So it looks like it's glass on camera, but if you look really closely and maybe more to the point, listen really closely, you can hear that it is in fact metal. So it's a rich metal phone, feels cold, feels stark, despite looking a little bit like glass and a real design highlight, it chips with a case. We always love this as a value add because it means, especially when you have a nice shiny new phone like this, you can protect it out of the box. What it also ships with is an on-screen screen protector, which I haven't taken off. So if you do see the screen protector, it is not indicative of the phone in its naked glory. Instead, I just would like to protect this brand spanking new phone like any sensible human being. As far as ports go, you've got USB-C at the base as well as a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. Single Single mono bottom firing speak, which is relatively easy to cover up. At the top there is nothing of note. All the buttons are to the right hand side. I really like the fact you've got the red accenting around the power button, akin to the Huawei P9 Plus. Volume rocker and on the left you've got all of these slots, micro SD card and SIM card. It's got a 64 gig of onboard storage too, which is double its predecessor and it's expandable by micro SD card, which is a sweet deal. So yeah, the design gets a really big thumbs up with regards to that textured metal. Some people haven't liked as much as I do, so get it in your hands beforehand. That said, if you opt for the black or the white one, or some of the other colors like the rose gold, it is blasted metal, and I think it just feels too much like an iPhone clone. This feels so different to an iPhone just because of that element. It's got similar kind of curved edges to an iPhone. It's nice and thin, seven millimeters, instead of in, by packing a bigger battery than the P9 before it. As for the screen, 1080p, uh, full HD resolution. It looks good. Huawei screens do tend to veer towards the blue hues. I don't mind that too much. And if you wanna look after your eyes, you can switch on eye comfort mode and that'll make everything a little bit more orange. And if you just wanna customize the white balance to your like eyes, then that's also super easy to do as well. You can jump into color temperature and tweak your little heart out. And so like I said, the um, fingerprint scanner is below the display and you can see I'm navigating with the fingerprint scanner. One tap takes you back, a swipe left takes you to multitasking and a long press takes you home. You can have on-screen navigation keys as well, but I'm just doing this to illustrate exactly what is new about the interaction. And that brings me on to Emotion UI 5. Very similar, if not identical to that of the Mate 9. You can have things like Apps Twin, so two instances of the same application. I found the Mate 9 Emotion UI was really, really stable, really responsive really quick machine learning going on under the hood that Huawei is implemented apparently is going like to level 10 on this thing it's going to get to know you and it's going to work around you so everything that you come to open is almost open in the background before you even open it it's going to figure it out kind of spooky but also kind of amazing so emotion UI in a nutshell on top of Android 7 you've got home screens you can populate with apps and widgets and folders no, um, the widgets on the left for example folders and all your apps are in the folders. There's no applications tray by default, although you can switch that on very, very easily and you can customize your home screen very easily too. So I've got the kind of most icons on a home screen manageable five by five, but you can have as little as four by five icons on screen. So if I jump out of that, you can also see a whole load of other things that you can do um, and like customize your transitions right through to change themes. But I'm gonna leave it exactly how it is. So the UI does get a thumbs up for stability though stock Android purists will definitely not like it I really really am starting to like emotion UI words that I never thought that I would say and so as for what's powering this thing along, it's a Kirin 960 processor paired with four gigabytes of RAM. That is exactly the same combination as found in the Mate 9. This gives me a degree of authority to say after a month 
and a half, two months of using the Mate 9 as my primary phone and it's still running smoothly with a full HD screen and a Kirin 960 processor and four gigabytes of RAM, this thing probably will too. Gaming is absolutely fair on it. It benchmarks very, very similarly. And I just found that I haven't had any issues with it so far in the 24 hours. And I don't believe I will, although every phone is different. So do make sure that you do check back for the full full review that isn't just on 24 hours after I've had this thing in. Um, uh, so in terms of ergonomics as well, the kind of pretty heavy upper and bottom bezeling actually make gaming quite nice on here, just as long as the controls are on the far side, fighting games and stuff like that. You can see I've got it set to flip between uh, portrait and landscape, but when you do hold it in landscape, like I said earlier, plug in headphones or Bluetooth speaker because you will be covering that loudspeaker very, very easily. And as far as the camera goes, the 12 megapixel sensor around the back is paired with a, a 20 megapixel sensor too. The RGB sensor has optical image stabilization, which is sweet. The camera UI is virtually identical, if not, well, yeah, you can see on the left-hand side, it's identical to the Honor 8. Um, You've got photo, monochrome, video, HDR, panorama, night shot, light painting, time-lapse, slow-mo, watermark, audio note, um, document scan, and more. Yes, you can download more like food mode, but I'm not gonna do that because there are plenty here. Swipe through, you can see you've got the viewfinder and swipe to the right for some additional options such as resolution, etc. You can also see some options at the top of the display. This is to toggle your flash on or off. Then there's a little aperture icon to switch on and off wide aperture mode. There's a new portrait mode, which kind of complements the wide aperture mode to blur the background and just enhance your face as well as a super vivid kind of color option mode. And you've got everyone's favorite filters. Um, but I'm gonna jump out of that and you can also see you can flip to the front camera. Hey guys, I look tired, it's midnight. Um, but I will jump back to the front camera because that portrait mode also takes advantage of the front eight megapixel Leica lens um, and yeah kind of not that great, but I'll tell you why in a sec. Because what is great is the sheer UI. You've got that same pro mode as found on the Huawei P9 with the um, pull up and pull down. And thanks to the image stabilization, you can get some handheld longer shutter speed shots than you could with the um, P9. So tap through on wide aperture mode. What's cool about wide aperture mode is it's always been good, but now it's good in monochrome as well. So if I swipe in from the right, tap monochrome, I can activate wide aperture mode. And this is native wide aperture mode because of the wide, um, the black and white sensor, native monochrome even. So I can tap through on that picture and I can see you've got that really, really gorgeous picture in monochrome and that looks utterly fantastic. Monochrome pictures generally are a bit sharper anyway and lower in noise. And you've also got that gorgeous picture with a nice blurred background <clears throat> in full color. Obviously being wide aperture, you can then jump out and adjust the aperture effects after you actually take your shot. <clears throat> so if I take a look at that picture now, making maximum blur effect, you can see some clipping, but at a distance you wouldn't be able to tell. And if I wanted to get rid of that clipping, it would actually be very, very easy to do. I'd just take it to a slightly higher aperture um, or fake aperture, which um, this is all post-processing um, and roughly uh, kind of at 3.2 should do it, I think. And pinch in and you can see there's a bit of clipping, but generally speaking, this is a very, very good looking shot considering it was taken on a smartphone. So I can tap that to go back out of that. And now I can actually talk you <clears throat> around some of the new features in terms of the portrait mode. Tap from the portrait mode and without anyone in front of me, I can't really do this. So I'm gonna have to turn it around and tap on portrait mode and take a picture. And what it does is it tries and finds a face and it's found my face and it's beautified my face and it has blurred out other elements in the background. In beautifying my face, it softens my beard, for example, and it just makes me look a little bit weird. Some people are really gonna like this. I find that it works a lot better with people who don't have facial hair. You can see as I move around, it's actually kind of thinking about what it's gonna blur and it reframes everything as well to make sure that my face is in perfect shot. So another one, it zoomed in on my face and this is all on the fly. So Huawei's kind of pinning this as a portrait studio in your pocket. 
me personally, I don't tend to take too many selfies, if any at all. So it's not going to be one that swayed me. And I haven't been overwhelmed by the results because I find it just softens the picture a bit too much. The photo quality in pure photo mode and wide aperture mode enables better shots. But this is early software, so that might have something to do with it. Um, and like I said, I'm not generally one for beautified portraits. Generally though, the image quality is good. The optical image stabilization does work well. Video does look good. It shoots up to 4K and you can see my 4K image sample, um, video sample on the channel as well. I uploaded that, it's a late night video sample and the image stabilization is kicking in nicely. With an abundance of shooting modes, full manual mode, it's at least as good as a P9 and the P9 was good. And then I don't find it as refined as a Mate 9, but the Mate 9 has had a fair few software iterations to make it better than it was when it first launched. So this is only going to get better. So yeah, really, really good camera and generally really good multimedia experience, especially thanks to that 64 gigabytes of onboard storage and micro SD expansion. That means that you can have absolutely tons of games on here right through from RPGs to fighting games. Um, and of course the screen looks decent. Wouldn't have minded an AMOLED panel at all. Wouldn't have minded Quad HD resolution and a bigger display. But that in mind, then if that's you, you should probably just opt for a P10 Plus. If we talk around the actual internals, the Kirin 960 processor, like I said, does benchmark well when paired with that four gigabytes of RAM and performs well too, and enables some very nice fast cat um, LTE speeds. Um, I can't remember off the bat. I I think it's Cat 12 though, don't quote me, um, but you can get really, really fast downloads. It's the fastest that EE is currently supporting in the UK. In addition, the 3200 milliamp battery is a boost over its predecessor. It is 20% bigger and it does last a long, long time. So it's midnight here. I'm on 16% battery. I took this thing off charge at 7 a.m. I've been using it all day. I really, really am impressed. As a power user who's been Instagramming, YouTubing, and streaming video constantly today, it's nailing it, absolutely nailing it. And with that, after 24 hours, I can't fail to be impressed by the P10. Is the P10 the best flagship for the price? It's a lot of money. It's much more expensive than the OnePlus 3, for example, or 3T specifically. Um, and is it that much better? I don't know if it's that much better. I've kind of become a fan of the Huawei Camry UI and the Huawei UI in general, I do prefer it to the OnePlus UI. Um, and I do prefer the design of the P10. Um, but if you just want sheer bang for buck with its Snapdragon six, uh, 820 and six gigabytes of RAM or 821, then the OnePlus 3T may well be the one for you. But yeah, the Huawei P10 as it stands is an excellent smartphone 24 hours in. Can't give you anything too conclusive until my full review though, so do check back for that. And if you've got any questions, anything that you want me to test out for it, let us know in the comments section below. But before I go, I will just finish up talking around exactly what is different between this and the P9, P P10 Plus, because the P10 Plus is the phone that I am really eyeing up. So for starters, there is that stereo speaker differentiation. Mono speaker on here, stereo speaker on the P10 Plus. Both IPS displays, but the stereo, the um, P10 Plus has a Quad HD resolution panel at 5.5 inches. So that bit bigger. You can also expect an infrared blaster at the top of the P10 Plus and the camera around the back has a f1.8 resolution as opposed to an f2.2 resolution, which will be great for macro, which should be really, really good for low light photography as well. The P10 Plus will also have six gigabytes of RAM as well as uh, 128 gigabytes of storage as well as a micro SD expansion. So you get a lot more phone for not as much difference in money as I thought that Huawei would be charging. The P10 and P10 Plus will both be released at the same time in the UK. So please let us know if you're going to be picking one up. Any questions, like I said, comments below. Like the video, click like, like the channel, subscribe. Thanks for watching, BTECT.